to my fellow bike enthusiasts who love to travel with their bike. Today, I'm excited to share this review with you. You see, my partner and I, we embarked on a three month, once in a lifetime trip around Europe and our trusty companions along this trip were our bicycles. Now, during this adventure, we thoroughly put the Evoc bike box to the test. The Evoc Road Bike Bag Pro, to be precise. A piece of kit that quickly became the unsung hero of our trip. This box, coming in at around 700 pounds, really proved itself through the 12 flights that it's been through this year. And it actually ended up becoming an indispensable part of our arsenal. In this video, I break down the pros, the cons, and some bike packing tips with this box. So whether you're a seasoned traveler with your bicycle or just dipping your toes into traveling with your bicycle, let's find out if this box is for you. Let's begin with the good. First, the Evoc bike bag made packing up your bike an absolute breeze. The thing I liked most about it was there's no need to remove your handlebars. This is especially useful if you have integrated handlebars. It even has a dedicated bar that goes along the back that protects the rear of the frame and the rear derailleur itself as well. The top of the box is also hard plastic protecting the whole top area so that it won't compress there at all. Even the softer parts of the bag don't really compress because of the sturdy plastic strips that go down the side. All you need to do to get your bike into this box is simply take off the wheels and take off the seat post. Job done. Once you've taken the wheels off, you can then secure the bike to the internal frame of the box, which can be taken out for easier use, and then simply strap it down with straps that lie in the box here. If you want to make packing the bike even easier, all of these lift out from one side, and then you can quite literally lay it down, and you've got a lot more space to get your bike into there. This is the bag's primary selling point, ease of use. It will also fit pretty much any road bike you can throw at it. My bike's a size 58, fits in no problem. We've had other people use 44 wide bars, no problem. Because you have to remove the seat posts, I do bring a torque wrench with me just to make sure that the seat post is torqued back up. I also tape around the exact level where I want it to go back into. The box also comes with bags to put your wheels into. And when I put the wheels in here, I tend to put the discs of the wheels facing inwards. And when packing and placing the wheels this way, out of all the trips I've done, I've never had a bent disc rotor. I even managed to fit my track pump and a few extras into the bag with the bike as well. I do, however, protect the track pump with a bit of pipe insulation just so it doesn't damage the frame of my bike. The bike box is also very versatile as well and is of course compatible with, with both disc and rim brakes, which is fantastic for those of us that like different setups on our bikes. Despite its sturdiness, this bag only weighs in at about 11 and a half kilos. This makes it weight friendly for the airline sports bag weight limits. It's big, but it's manageable. It's also quite easy to store the box vertically on both sides either way. And if you need to, you can also collapse the box when it's not in use to save more space. Durability. The box has survived numerous flights and my bike has always come out unscathed. Most importantly, the box gives me confidence every single time that I fly with it and I no longer worry about what my bike's gonna look like or my frame is gonna look like when I get to the other side. The box also comes with a code lock on the zip. Whilst it's not perfect, it does add to your perceived feeling of security with the box. With all of the good out of the way, there are a few things with the box that don't work so well. And the first issue is the tracking issue with the front wheel. The front wheel does not track straight on smooth surfaces. It tends to track just slightly sideways one way or the other. It almost crabs along. To avoid this, I often end up just picking the bag up by the handle here. And if you want to make it more comfortable, you can just remove the front wheel and wheel it along. I believe this happens because the front wheel kind of has like small notches and increments that it tends to sit in. And annoyingly, there just isn't one that points straight. As I just said, it is especially noticeable on smooth surfaces. However, on a rougher or bumpier surface like normal tarmac, it tends to track a lot straighter. And I think it's just because the front wheel seems to jump between those two notches at the front. So overall, the box ends up going straight. Other than the front wheel, the wheels are big enough to handle pretty much most cracks and holes in most surfaces. So whilst the tracking of the front wheel isn't a major issue, it's still a pain in the ass. Then there's the elephant in the room. 
The box is massive. It just about fits through airport securities and it can be a real challenge to get this into taxis, especially if you're traveling with two of them like we were. If you have more than one, make sure you order the large taxis like the van versions. We also found when traveling on trains, we really frustrated a lot of people just because they were so massive and took up the entire storage area so no one else could put their suitcases on the train. This isn't a deal breaker for me, and it's a price that you've got to pay for the ease and the convenience of how easy it is to pack your bike into this thing. The next thing I don't like about this box is there's no protection around the zip area. That means when it's standing vertically, like on this side or even the other side, it does sit on the plastic of the zip. If you're buying this box secondhand, this is one thing to look out for especially on the part that it rests on, because if you do too much damage to your zip, well, you're gonna render your 700 pound bike box useless. If you're buying them new, however, I do know that the new versions of these boxes do have protectors around the zip, so it makes it much easier to rest the boxes like this, which you'll be surprised that you actually do more frequently than you would think. Our boxes have been great, but they are starting to show some signs of wear and tear over the years. They're still holding up, but I can't give you a good prediction of how much longer they're gonna last. I do think they do have a good few years left in them though. Lastly, let's talk about the cost. It is undeniably expensive, this box. And whilst the ease of use and the security of your bike justifies that price for me, it is still a very significant investment to make. In conclusion, the Evoc road bike bag has been incredibly reliable for me through our adventures. It is great, but it is also a flawed piece of gear. With that being said though, I don't think the perfect bike box will ever exist. This one for me, however, comes very close. If you're serious about protecting your bike and making life easy for yourself, then I think that this justifies the investment. Of course, if you have any specific questions about the bike box, or you would like an update on how it's going now, then feel free to either comment below and I'll reply, or you can hit me up on Instagram over here. And speaking of expensive stuff, if you want to see a quick review on how the absolute black graphene pads did, then feel free to click the link that's gonna come up on screen now. Thanks for watching this review. I've been Cycling Unboxed. I'll see you in the next video.